to my grandpa. Um, so Gramps had a certain effect on people. He managed to be admirable, kind, respectful, extremely intelligent, sometimes sassy, but most of all, extremely loving. He was probably too humble to truly understand and recognize how loved he was able to make us all feel. I think that Gramps and I had a pretty special relationship. We didn't get to talk or see each other super often, but when we did, I genuinely enjoyed his company. Gramps understood me. He understood that I love mac and cheese, but he was also health conscious, so of course he would just put hot dogs in it because that's the right thing to do. That obviously makes it healthy. Um, he understood that I loved to sing and perform. So even when it was most difficult for him, he flew out to California to watch me belt out that high C in West Side Story. He understood that I am obsessed with dogs, so when we got our new puppy buddy, he was there the day of. He also tried to break the news as nicely to me as possible that the dog was terrible at playing fetch, <laughs> but he did not go back inside. When it was a failed attempt, he stayed out there and helped me try to teach him. As Antigone said, he understood the art of selfies. He truly knew how to work it for the camera as seen in my countless Snapchat stories. He understood my passionate love for taking naps and always supported me when doing it. We were great nap buddies. But lastly, Gramps understood how to make me feel at peace. He always laughed at my jokes. He really knew how to give a good hug. He never stopped caring. When our family went to Hawaii this past summer, I was lucky enough to sit outside with Gramps one night and watch the sunset in the picnic chairs that we had outside of the house that we rented. In a very rare moment of touchy-feeliness for him, he told me how he felt about himself, his past, and his future. He held my hand and he told me that he understood how great of a life he had lived and that he saw how lucky he really was. He told me stories about his life traveling when he was younger, and being in the Navy. He continued and eventually I probably rudely and abruptly cut him off because we all know Grants could go on forever about something he loved and knew a lot about. So I turned to him on those picnic chairs on the beach, eyes pretty watery, and asked him very straightforwardly, as I always could with him, Grants, do you ever feel afraid and we both knew exactly what I was talking about. It was a moment of honesty and truthfulness. He held my hand tighter and he looked at me and said, no, this is what life is. This is how life works, Abby. He said, I'm not afraid. I was nervous to fly here. I knew it was gonna be a hassle, <laughs> but no, I'm not afraid. I am very, very happy. So, Grants, thank you for teaching me how to buy you life. Thank you for teaching me how to love others, how to respect and value myself, and for being the ultimate role model to everyone. I hope you are sitting in your own little picnic chairs right now, watching the beautiful view in Hawaii, I just wish I was there to hold your hand and do it with you. I love you and miss you. Thank you. Well, I'm not quite as prepared as Mrs. Fritz. Um, <clears throat> but I'm just going to try and say a couple of things that um, my grandfather taught me. As most of you probably know he was fiercely intelligent. And for someone who is that smart, he possessed this incredible gift for humor. Um, I, on countless occasions when I was very uncomfortable, he managed to make me feel better by cracking a little joke. Um, as most of you know, uh, they, my grandparents had a condo in Dana Point, and once when I was eight or nine years old, I was down there and I was very sick. 
um, they were taking care of me, and we were watching some documentary on the Titanic, which my grandfather absolutely loved. They had an entire room at that condo that was dedicated to Titanic paraphernalia. Um, and so we were watching this documentary, and I was sweating and feverish, so this was clearly the greatest piece of cinema I had ever seen. Um, I was really uncomfortable and I started shaking because I got cold. And he brought me his Stanford blanket that he loved. And my grandfather went to Stanford. He loved that blanket. And about 35 seconds after he put it around me, I vomited all over it. <laughs> <laughs> and he started laughing hysterically. I was terrified because I knew he loved this blanket and I thought, was gonna be so mad, and I was like, oh, Grant's is gonna kill me, and he just started laughing and laughing, and it was one of the first times where I realized that it's okay to laugh at yourself. I, if my grandfather, who is like this bastion of propriety, can laugh at himself and laugh at something like that, then surely we all can in any moment of our lives. Um, uh, another time that this happened, this is sort of a through line throughout my relationship with him. We were in Lake Louise, as you guys will see eventually on the, um, on the slideshow. And uh, my dad, and my dad, my sister, my grandfather and I all went to, um, to Canada together. And my grandfather and I were rooming together for this. And he was in the midst of a chemotherapy treatment that was self-administered. Um, and so I actually, because it was hard for him to inject himself, had, had to do it a few times. And when, when I did that, it was far scarier for me than it was for him. And I remember sitting there just terrified to do this for my grandfather. And he just would look at me and give me that gentle smile that he had, and he just say, it's okay. And here we were in this room, and I was about to do this to him, and he was there comforting me, and it just seemed so backwards, but it was beautiful. And um, one, of, one of the last sort of great moments of comedy in his life, though it was a little bit darker, um, it was the last time we were in Wisconsin when we saw him, and he was, was coughing a lot and we were all sort of huddled in their kitchen and we were talking about like oh maybe it's too cold in here maybe it's not all right and he was we thought napping in the corner and from the other room that none of us could see him we hear him just yell it's the cancer <laughs> and we're just like hmm, maybe it is that um so i just I want to take this opportunity to say to my grandfather, thank you for teaching me that it is all right to laugh at yourself and that comedy can really just bring brevity and life, light to your life. So here's to David.